show you contract management. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to go into the procurement tool where a user is shopping or internal catalog and searching for a first aid kit. One article is 45, but if I order 10, it's 44.50. If I ordered 100, it's 42.75. Hey, what's happening here? There is a contract behind the scene. And this contract states that there is quantity volume discount. The more you order, the cheaper it gets. And this is applied dynamically by the system. It also tracks that there's still, there's been so far 33,000 33, euros expended on this contract. So we've clicked, we are now inside the contract management module itself. And you see, you have the different areas, the four areas, overview, the tasks, the team, the documents that we talked about that governs when the contract will expire or where, when will it be renewed, etc. So a little bit like we did in sourcing, let's go through the layers. So we'll start with the signature, which is the core, it's the legal documents. And here we have tasks that says, send a final, approve, a final approval for the signature. And uh, we also upload the signed agreement into the contract. So we will have tasks that govern that document itself. So let's look at the document. The main agreement is here and we see it not in Microsoft Word, we could have clicked on it and opened it there, but we see the clauses made in outline, templates or standard or non-standard. You see here, this is from a library. It's an alternative clause. This one is non-standard, someone typed it in. So the system tracks on each clauses what happened with them and that can derive a workflow. Of course, there is version controls of everything that's been done. You can compare versions if you want to. So let's continue and look at some types of contract. This is more inside the metadata. So you see here, we have three master data, sub-agreements, standalone agreement. You can have more. This is all configurable if you need to. This is how the contract will interact within each other. We also have the dates. What's happening with the dates? What's happening with this contract? It's fixed, perpetual, auto-renew, it starts, it ends. It, you need to be notified that many days beforehand. That's to make sure that you don't miss on any opportunities around this contract. Then you have the task. Who needs to do what? Draft the contract, approval. We have an approval here, the contract. All those documents were prepared. We're ready to go. We could do a new round, replace, publish. But what's interesting is, look, three people needed to approve and they just went and approved it directly onto the system so it could go move on to the next step and from there this is how this contract gets created it can be pushed to procurement that we saw at the beginning at the beginning for utilization and then you have reporting around everything here of uh, contract per Per, per supplier, per categories, or uh, expiring contracts, anything that you need to know to track what's happening with those. Now, we're also going to look at some other interesting graphics here. Clause modification, this is interesting when it's electronic. You see payment term was replaced 23 times, and this one was also replaced 20 times. The payment terms might have a problem inside our contracting process. Because of this visibility, lawyers can define new standard clauses. And you can search for any term here. I went a bit silly, I searched for potato, but hey, I have a result. What is this? So I'm going to open the Microsoft Word document with outline that we see here inside the system. And yeah, there was the word potato inside this text. It was hidden in there. So full text search capability across the entire system. And this is, at the end of the day, how you can manage all the contracts, their clause, their complexity, their renewals, and apply this to procurement for better compliance.